Well, everybody, it is official. Valve has just updated their website with this. With Lenovo's announcement at CES 2025 of the Lenovo Legion Go S, we are pleased to share that their powered by SteamOS model is the first handheld officially licensed to ship with Valve's SteamOS. We built this operating system to provide a seamless user experience optimized for gaming while retaining access to the power and flexibility of a PC. SteamOS is the same operating system we run on the Steam Deck, and the team is making updates to ensure it fully supports the Lenovo Legion Go S and provides the same seamless experience customers expect. But it gets even better because in addition, the same work that we are doing to support the Legion Go S will improve compatibility with other handhelds ahead of the Legion Go S shipping we will be shipping a beta of SteamOS, which should improve the experience on other devices and users can download and test this for themselves, something I guarantee you that I will be doing. And of course, we will continue adding support and improving the experience with future releases. So it's official. SteamOS is going to be shipping sometime before the launch of the Legion Go S, which is coming at the end of the March, at the end of the March, at the end of March, or early April. This is huge news, everyone. I've been waiting for Valve to ship SteamOS since they launched the Steam Deck. And while Bazite has been a great substitute in the meantime, I prefer to use official stuff. But while we wait for Valve to finally give us what we've been asking for, let's take a look at the Legion Go announcement that happened today at CES. The Lenovo Legion Go S is now officially announced and it looks like nearly everything that we saw in these leaks are true. First off, there are two versions. There's a Windows version in white and a SteamOS version in black, although they call it violet. And they have similar specs, starting with a huge eight inch display coming in at 1920 by 1200. I like that they didn't go higher resolution than that. At eight inches, I think that that resolution is fine. It's not an OLED display, which is a little bit disappointing, but if they gave us everything that we wanted in this version, what could they sell us next time around? It has an AMD Ryzen Z2 Go processor, which is a custom processor made just for Lenovo, which is an RDNA 2 graphics with four core CPU and a 12 core GPU. But according to Tom's guide, it also has a Ryzen Z1 Extreme option, which is very interesting. I'm not sure where that came from. Storage goes up to one terabyte and memory goes up to 32 gigs, depending on which version you buy. It has two USB 4 ports and weighs in at 1.6 pounds. It has a 55 watt hour battery, so let's talk about battery life. Over at The Verge, they are saying that it runs at about 20 watts. And if you crunch the numbers, that will get you between two to two and a half hours of battery life, of course, depending on what game you're playing. Like if you're playing demanding games, you, you'll get about two to two and a half hours. Play something that's a little, little bit less demanding, you can get a lot more battery life. But you can always configure it to run at higher performance profile at the cost of battery, all the way up to 40 watt performance, according to The Verge. I think that the ROG Ally and Legion Go top out at 35 watts. So this does go higher than those, uh, but like I said before, you're going to be losing battery if you do that. Of course, it is worth pointing out that this is the Z2 chip, which has a you know fewer cores than the Z1 chip. This should mean a battery savings because we have fewer cores on the CPU, and the CPU is almost never the bottleneck that we have that we run into on these devices. It's almost always the GPU is where we run into problems. They also pointed out over at The Verge that it uses a full-length M.2 2280 drive, which means bumping your storage up would be trivially, trivially easy and cheaper than 2230 drives uh, or 2240 drives that are in the Legion Go. However, I watched a video from Dave2D. He actually has hands-on with a preview model, and he opened it up, and he says it only has, uh, has the shorter NVMEs, which is strange. So... Dave has the device in hand and the people at, you know, CES are just, you know, re replying, reposting stuff that they're getting from press releases. So I'm going to trust Dave on this. It's a little disappointing if it doesn't have 2280 drives. Moving on. He also mentioned that it has Hall Effect sticks, which is something I haven't really seen mentioned anywhere else. I've linked to his video down below. So if you haven't seen it yet, you can check it out. On the back of the device, you get two back paddles instead of the four that are on the Steam Deck. 
This could be a deal breaker for a lot of you that have come to really love the back paddles on the Steam Deck, for, but for me, it's fine. I never use more than two anyway. Uh, most of the time, I just use one. That said, back paddles have become a necessity for me at this point, and any controller that ships without back paddles, I'm not really interested in. But back to the screen. The screen has a 120 hertz, 1920 by 1200. Higher refresh rates are great, but I think, think that the real winner here is that it is a variable refresh rate screen. For those of you that don't remember what happened with the Legion Go, was it last year or the year before? I think it was last year. Um, if you didn't follow the Legion Go that closely when it originally leaked, there was a slide that showed that it had a variable refresh rate display. But then when they actually announced it, it didn't have a VRR display anywhere. So a lot of people were disappointed in that. Well, this one does have variable refresh rate. And that means that when you hit a dip in your frame rate, the refresh rate of the, of the display will change to match that frame rate, which makes the gameplay feel smoother on games that struggle on a device like this. You play AAA games on these, these handheld devices you got to make sacrifices and some of those sacrifices are going to be in frame rates and having a variable refresh uh, display, uh, a variable refresh rate display is going to make things so much smoother feeling. The Windows version is shipping this month at $729, which I don't know about that price really. I mean, maybe it's a little bit much, but it's less than the ROG Ally X, which comes in at $800, although the ROG Ally X comes with an 80 watt hour battery, which is more, but it also comes with, well, depending on which version you're talking about, it has 24 gigs of RAM. Compare that to the uh, Legion Go S, that comes with 16 gigs of RAM for the $500 version and 32 gigs of RAM for the $729 version. Sorry, there's a lot of numbers floating around. Anyway, uh, it comes with less RAM. And we're going to have to wait to see how the Z2 Go chip compares to the Z1 Extreme chip. Uh, like, we got to see what those benchmarks are going to look like. Fast forward a few months, and they're going to be shipping a slightly less powerful version, not the $729 version that I just talked about. This is going to be the SteamOS version, which is going to sell for $500. Now, what's different about it? Well, obviously, it comes with SteamOS but it also has 16 gigs of RAM, a half a terabyte of storage. The Windows version that's going to be shipping in May alongside the SteamOS version, it's gonna cost an extra $100 for the window ver Windows version, and it's going to kick the storage up to a full terabyte. I personally find it really strange that the one that is shipping in May has two SKUs, and it doesn't bother me that it has two SKUs, but the different hardware specs are they're limiting you to which operating system you want. I would like more choice here. Let me pick my RAM, let me pick my storage, let me pick my OS, make three choices and then ship it to me. That way the customer can get exactly what they want. Next up, people are probably wondering why we have to wait for the cheaper versions. Well, I can't speak to the Windows version, but according to Pierre Lou Griffet, who's an engineer at Valve and Lawrence Yang, also an engineer at Valve, they said that SteamOS is not quite ready for this hardware. One thing that I'm wondering about is how effective will that trackpad be? Dave2D showed us it, that it was working in mouse input in Windows, but I want it to work the way that the trackpads do on the Steam Deck, and I don't know if a trackpad that size will really be useful. Dave's, Dave2D said that the trackpad felt great, but he wasn't doing SteamOS stuff with it or Steam input stuff with it. And that's the thing that I'm most interested in when it comes to a trackpad like that. Anyway, all of that remains to be seen. Now, you might be thinking, all right, Lenovo gets SteamOS. What other hardware is going to have it officially? Well, right now, we don't know because, you know, Valve has said it's just, it's, it's just Lenovo at this point, and we'll talk about that in a second. Um, but they also said, you know, we're going to ship the, the the software and people can install it on their own hardware. But right now, their only partner is Lenovo. We did recently see GPD Win say that they were going to be supporting SteamOS in partnership with Valve on the GPD Win 4. But Valve has another story to tell. Over at The Verge, they actually spoke to Valve. And while Valve is getting ready to ship SteamOS in a new beta for everybody else... 
that could work on other hardware. As of right now, Lenovo is the only partner for a SteamOS device. Of course, that means shipping with SteamOS. I'm sure that once Valve ships SteamOS, which we know is going to be happening soon, it'll work pretty well on most hardware as long as it doesn't have NVIDIA hardware, which I can't think of any handhelds that do have NVIDIA hardware other than the Nintendo Switch and the Nintendo Switch 2. Uh, you know, apparently, not apparently, allegedly. That's the word I meant to say. Now, for those of you that are worried that we won't see new Steam Deck anytime soon, worried not. Friend of the show and host of the Full Nerd Podcast, Adam, Adam Patrick Murray, got to talk to Pierre-Luc Griffet over at CES, and he basically confirmed not only are they working on Steam Deck 2, but they have a lot of hardware irons in the fire that they are working on because they they are going full in on making their own hardware, and that is at their top of their list to make their own hardware, and they're also supporting other hardware, and I think that that's a really smart way to do it. But what do you think? Are you interested in the Legion Go S? Will you be installing SteamOS on your other hardware? I personally think that this stuff looks great. It has the features that I want from a handheld, and it has a pretty decent price point. Let me know if you're picking one up in the comments down below. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe. From the Nerd Nest, I'm Bill. Stay rad, and thanks for watching.